There's a lot of great people in the military, but none of them are in Washington, D.C. I was thinking, well, are you guys here for the, the work or are you here to play like political games? My name is Jack Posobiec and this is my story. So I was born in Narstown, Pennsylvania, uh, just a couple of miles outside of Philadelphia, a very working class town, play outside until the lights come on kind of place. Finished high school, went to Temple University up in North Philly. I was studying political science and broadcasting mass media. We learned the power of narratives. We learned the power of cognitive dissonance, really the power of media in general. I mean, I remember a time where our professor gave a lecture and then showed us a clip of himself on CNN with Anderson Cooper. And he was saying the same things on the interview that he said in the, the lecture just prior, but everybody was applauding and cheering and laughing. And then he turned it off and he said, why did you have such an emotional reaction when you saw me on CNN? I didn't say anything differently than I had said in the lecture before. And everyone's kind of looking around. He said, that's the power of the media. My last semester, I was really getting more and more involved in politics, was really interested in international relations, and had an opportunity to go and study abroad. And I said, I got to do China. China doesn't fit any one box, and it doesn't fit anyone's preconceived notions about it. If you want power in China, if you want to succeed, if you want progress, you either have to join the party or you have to bend the knee to the party. It's a little hokey, but I always use this to explain to people the difference between like Eastern thinking and Western thinking. Western checkers, right, or chess, you know, take your pick. It's it's one on one, it's force on force. It's red v black and I'm gonna take you out and I'm gonna take your pieces and wipe you off the board and destroy you. In the Eastern version, it's multipolar and you don't win by direct conflict. You win by encircling your opponent and then depriving them of any way to move forward. And if you understand that difference between direct versus indirect conflict, then you can understand the differences between the Western and the Eastern way of thinking. I had opportunities to stay in Shanghai, but that wasn't the path that I wanted to be on. I decided that I'd like to do something for my country. And so flew home and walked into a, a, a Navy recruiting station. And I, I said, I want to join the US military and I want to be in intelligence. And they said, why? Why do you say that? And I said, because I want to do something about China before they do it to us. There's a lot of great people in the military and there's a lot of great people that are doing good work, but none of them are in Washington, DC. You know, we would go and collect information or have information from the field and send it back to Washington. And it felt like every time that we did that, it just got more and more sanitized and more and more politicized as it went up the food chain. You would meet these people that were always in the management track, the leadership track, and they were some of the most political, politicized people you would ever find. So they would always have CNN on, they would always be reading the Washington Post. And I remember raising my hand once and saying, hey, you know, we focus on China here. Shouldn't we have Chinese TV on? And they would say, well, what do you want to watch that for? That's propaganda. I said, yes, exactly. Shouldn't it make sense for us to understand what they're focusing on because they're telling us what their strategic intent is, they're telling us what's important to them, or at least what's important for their people to learn at any given time. And they laughed it off and they said, no, we're going to keep watching CNN, maybe watch MSNBC. Don't, don't even think about putting on Fox. That stuck with me because I was thinking, well, are you guys here for the, the work or are you here to play like political games? And it just got worse and worse as I was there. It also seemed that if you wanted to attain leadership, if you wanted to go up the ranks, if you were going from captain and you wanted to be admiral, you needed to adhere to all of those new political talking points. And it was these types of, I guess you could call them, you know, woke leaders that kept getting more and more and more power. It didn't surprise me that that sort of inculcation of these ideas in the leadership of the military ranks has gotten so bad because I saw the beginning of it all those years ago. During 2016, a lot of these forces came to a head. Twitter, you know, took off and politics just became inundated everywhere. And so I started doing more and more politics on the Twitter account. 
for the whole first half of 2016, I was on deployment as the intel director of an expeditionary task force. But in the evening, I would go on Twitter, find out what's going on, find out about you know the, what rally's happening, get the real story out, and then blow that up and show people what was really happening on the ground at these different political rallies or events. And I remember actually one of the big things we saw early on was Antifa. There would always be these headlines that would come out from CNN that would say, violence breaks out at Trump rally. And I think, my gosh, violence, that's terrible. And then you zoom in and it shows, yeah, there was violence, but it was people coming up and attacking people leaving the rally. And you say, well, wait, well, that headline's wrong. It's not the violence didn't break out, it's attendees were attacked and yet they were attacked by someone. Who is that someone, right? And CNN is leaving that completely out of the story. Woke people that work at these media agencies, they want to highlight stories that support them, and they want to downplay or omit stories that would make their side look bad. And so you've gotten away from this idea of, hey, we report what's going on, and we only report things that support our agenda. During 2020, that really almost became like some kind of argument or a debate between corporate media and independent media. Were protests peaceful or were there riots? And I think the true answer was that there was both, right? So during the day, yes, there were peaceful protests in many cities throughout 2020. Um, people support Black Lives Matter. People were upset about what happened to George Floyd. They held peaceful protests and rallies and marches all of which is protected under the First Amendment. At night, there were riots, there was looting, there was arson, there were killings, there were shootings. All of these things happened. And yet, because the corporate media was so much in the tank for supporting the Black Lives Matter rallies, as opposed to just reporting on them, they couldn't report on the violence because they were trying to drive a narrative that it was only peaceful, but then only peaceful became mostly peaceful while there's a fire raging behind him. And it wasn't just Seattle, it was Kenosha, it was Minneapolis, it was Philadelphia, New York, DC, pick a city, it happened. To this day, they act like it didn't happen. They act as if that was just some, you know, online thing that was debunked, but it was never debunked. And there's a body count. You don't have a body count from a peaceful protest. In August of 2020, I was in Chaz, which was this quasi-autonomous, separatist, anarcho-state that had been declared in this sort of crazy situation where Antifa members and far-left members from around the country traveled to downtown Seattle and were protesting, rioting, looting for night after night, Jenny Durkin, who was the mayor of Seattle, she said, well, why don't we just stand down the police, pull them out of the precinct, not send anyone in there and let them take over that area because they want it so much. And then she goes on CNN and she says, maybe it will be a summer of love. So what happens, right? There was this guy, Raz Simone, who kind of declared himself the warlord of Chaz, distributing AK-47s to his buddies in there, stomping around like he owns the place. They broke into a car dealership, smashed the gate, demanded to get in, and this guy who owned the dealership comes out. His son's got an AR-15 with a mob of people standing between him and I'm in there just trying to film this. They were kind of able to de-escalate things, but I could tell that we were maybe a few beats away from shots being fired. And so we saw it getting violent. We had guns drawn at us multiple times. The night that we got out, you know, I came out, did a live broadcast, and I said, you need to shut it down because people are going to die, right? This little experiment is failing. One week later, it led to a body count. A couple of kids were out joyriding. Looks like they had, um, they had stolen a Jeep or something. Drove through because the cops were chasing them. They think, if I, we go to Chaz, the cops can't come in. The militant guards start screaming, oh, it's the KKK. Both the teenagers were African-American, but, you know, they open fire. Um, one of them gets shot up, the other one dies. Kids were being killed because they thought, oh, it's just a fun place to go where there's no laws. Well, it turns out when you go to a place when there are no laws, there is a law. It's called the law of the street. And they weren't able to go home to their parents because of this. We're not at a good time in this country. We're really not. You need to take a stand and you need to pick a side now because doing the normie thing of 
sitting around and thinking things are gonna get better, they're not. They're not gonna get better on their own. I don't want my kids to have to be dealing with this kind of stuff when they're my age. I want the country back. That was the one that I grew up in. And until we get to that point, we are gonna consistently need more people coming out, being vocal, stop being the silent majority. You've got to speak out now. Thank you so much for watching this. If you want to continue seeing more videos like this and continue making PragerU videos be free, consider making a tax-deductible donation. And who knows, maybe the next story will be yours.